Now, in a landmark ruling, a coroner has recorded air pollution as a cause of death after an inquest into the death of a nine-year-old girl. Ella Kissy Deborah died after a fatal asthma attack seven years ago. Now this is the first time air pollution has ever been listed as a cause on a death certificate in the UK. Ella's mother, Rosamond Adu Kissy Deborah, said they had got the justice her daughter so deserved. She wants her legacy to be a new Clean Air Act. We'll hear from her in a moment, but first, Kamian Zerum reports. Beautiful. You can take a photo of me. It's in photos and videos that Ella Kissy Deborah lives on, and her short life is hugely significant. Because in the first ruling of its kind, pollution from busy roads, a coroner found today, contributed to the nine year old's premature death in 2013. In the plain words of his coroner's report, Philip Barlow said Ella's medical cause of death was acute respiratory failure, severe asthma and air pollution. Ella herself has been described as the canary in the coal mine of a public health crisis. Poisonous fumes round the South East London streets near Ella's home were constantly higher than legal limits. This is me. Normally bubbly and vivacious, Ella began to suffer seizures as her asthma worsened. She was rushed to hospital 27 times in three years, before one night her body just gave up. Ella's mother, a retired head teacher, has spent the year since her death fighting to establish the truth. Failure to reduce pollution helped kill her daughter. Yes, this was about my daughter getting air pollution on the death certificate, which we finally have. And we've got the justice for her, which she so deserved. But also, it's about other children still, as we walk around our city, of high levels of air pollution. And I hope you heard what the coroner said, that there are still illegal levels of air pollution now, as we speak. So this matter is far from over. Ella's mother is one of many demanding a new Clean Air Act. There are busy roads across the country, just like the South Circular here, not far from where Ella lived, where pollution is, as we heard today, potentially deadly. The implications of today's findings go way beyond the streets of South London. In the capital, the ultra-low emission zone, which penalises the most polluting vehicles, is being expanded, but not until next October, eight years after Ella's death. It'll widen from the current central congestion charge area up to, but not including, the north and south circulars where Ella lived. The Mayor of London said today other families can't be allowed to suffer the same heartbreak as Ella's, while her local council, Lewisham, called for a national commitment to tackle air pollution. Looking across the population, it's estimated that there are around 36,000 early deaths every year which are linked to pollution. Many of those will be lung disease or heart disease. They're unlikely to be young people, but there's still the problem that breathing pollution when you're young could leave you at risk of health problems in the future. Campaigners who've been fighting Heathrow expansion on carbon emission grounds are turning their attention to roads and the government's £27 billion national road investment strategy, which includes controversial projects like the Lower Thames Crossing and the Stonehenge Tunnel. Ella's case is a tragic one, and I think what it shows is that we need to have a sea change when it comes to transport planning and development. Um, and for road building, it really should be the straw that breaks the camel's back. We need to be taking funding out of road building and investing in cleaner, safer and healthier alternatives. The government said today that air pollution has gone down over the last decade, with emissions of nitrogen oxides falling by a third. But their thoughts tonight are with Ella's family and friends. None of this, of course, will bring her back. The question now is what today's ruling might do for others at risk from pollution. Well, earlier I spoke to Rosamond Adu Kissy Deborah, Ella's mother, who you saw in that report, and I asked her what this verdict meant to her personally. It means, finally, I have the justice that I've been seeking for for almost eight years now. And it was absolutely overwhelming in court. And the fact that I got to share it with Ella's siblings as well, 
and for them who have now spent half of their life without their sister and I could see how visibly moved they were. What kind of toll has it taken on you as a family and you mentioned Ella's siblings there? How we lost Ella was so brutal. All those hospital visits, all the resuscitation on that tiny body of hers and at times she was scared, I was scared. You never knew where the next seizure was coming from. There were cardiac arrests that people found out for today. It was absolutely horrendous. And emotionally, it does take its toll. You know, when you become a parent, you, you never envisage you'll be resuscitating your own child. And even for the medics, they don't want to see a child in that situation. And one minute she was well, and then the next minute she, she wasn't. And I think the difficulty was nobody knew exactly why then. And now you have secured justice for Ella. How will you and the campaign that you've so doggedly fought, how will you carry on in terms of trying to change government policy on pollution? There is a lack of understanding about the impact of air pollution on the human body. And I think people don't realise how quickly, especially a child under the age of 10, can become severely ill. So there is a lot of ed education to be had. And because it, it is invisible, People don't take it seriously. So we have an enormous job to do. But there are many other campaigners out there, and I'm sure they will help us raising awareness about this very important issue. So just tell me a little bit more about how you'd like the law to change and for that to be a, a sort of memorial to Ella. I believe that breathing clean air is a human right, and this needs to be enshrined in law. Any law that comes in in my late daughter's name the, it should be to save lives, future lives. My hope is that no child will ever go through what she went through. She suffered greatly, and that's never going to change. No one should have to do that, based on the air which they breathe. And just finally, Rosamond, you have secured justice for Ella today, but it tragically won't bring her back, of course. How do you remember your daughter now? I will remember her kindness, her smile, um, and the fact that she lives on through her siblings, that there are some similarities between them. Um, I, I, our house will forever be quiet. It's not as noisy as when she was around. But, you know, I carry her within my heart and she will always be with me. And I'm incredibly proud of her. Um, she was only nine. And today she has achieved an incredible feat. And... She wanted her siblings and her friends especially to always remember her. And I hope today the world, people around the world who are breathing filthy air. And I feel she sacrificed her life, but I hope that um, they will all be breathing cleaner air in, in the future. Rosamond Adukasi Deborah, thanks so much for talking to me. Thank you for having me. Well, another key ruling today has disappointed environmental campaigners. The prospect of a third runway at London's Heathrow Airport was given a boost after the airport's owners won a challenge at the Supreme Court, no less. It means that they can now seek planning permission for that runway, which had previously been blocked by the Court of Appeal for failing to meet the UK's latest climate change targets. Our chief correspondent, Alex Thompson, has this report. Bulldozing villages for a third runway is still years off. More court cases and a massive planning inquiry may yet kill the project. In February, the Court of Appeal ruled that the then Transport Secretary, Chris Grayling, hadn't paid sufficient attention to the Paris Climate Agreement and acted unlawfully in allowing the runway to go ahead. This was groundbreaking. The first global signal that governments could be forced to abandon high-carbon projects because of Paris. Cue euphoria from Friends of the Earth who brought the case. This is an absolutely astounding victory for climate justice. The government accepted that, but Heathrow appealed. And this morning, the Supreme Court overturned the judgment, allowing the project to proceed to a planning application. Whilst we're obviously disappointed with this judgment, um, it's a setback, it's not the end of the road at all. Uh, there's everything to fight for in the planning stage because the judgment makes clear that full climate arguments can in fact be made at the planning stage. Both sides today facing up to this latest twist in the saga. One anti-runway activist threw a can of red paint at the court, caught red-handed.
Last night, a leading anti-runway barrister told Channel 4 News the Supreme Court is not supreme. It's the highest court in the UK. But if you say that we're going to use dangerous uh, uh, temperature limits to measure our projects, that threatens the lives of people in this country. It threatens the younger generation. It's a breach of the government's positive obligation to take practical and effective measures to safeguard people's lives. So we'll be taking the case to the European Court of Human Rights in Strasbourg. But Heathrow groups insist their planning application will comply with the Paris climate targets. I say very clearly that if Heathrow cannot demonstrate that they will do that through a clear plan with airlines, with other airports, to reduce that carbon and meet the targets set out in Paris, then there won't be any expansion. It's as simple as that. It'll be in the planning application. If it doesn't meet those targets, enshrined in law as part of the planning application, then it won't happen. Covid's devastated global aviation, of course. Heathrow's own boss said in May they won't need the runway for at least 10 to 15 years. Now, though, the line has changed. We have to have a recovery plan, and this is an important step for our country to be able to say here are up to 180,000 jobs and 10,000 apprenticeships at the time when we, when we need them most. This is a crucial day for our post-Covid COVID recovery. But all this could seriously damage the Prime Minister's claim to be making the UK a world leader in carbon cutting. He's co-hosting the critical Global Climate Summit in Glasgow just a year from now. Launching that with David Attenborough earlier this year, along with that promise personally to stop the Heathrow bulldozers. I will lie down with you in front of those bulldozers. Well, it turns out that the Prime Minister might not need to get his suit dirty lying down in front of any bulldozers at Heathrow because, as Prime Minister, he ultimately could stop the planning process and stop the third runway, should it come to that. But that planning issue is several years down the line now. Tonight, number 10 says all that stuff about lying down in front of bulldozers were Johnson's words in 2015. It claims he'd now say, like the Supreme Court did today, the project has to meet strict criteria for pollution, noise and climate change. Well, let's try and bring all the strands together. I'm joined now by Katie Neal from Client Earth, an organisation that fights for environmental causes through the courts, and by Gavin Davis from the GMB Union, who represents workers at Heathrow Airport. Welcome to you both. Let me start with you, Katie, first of all, and this is really about the tragic case of Ella Kissy Deber. I mean, this is a, a very big legal deal in the coroner's ruling, but how will it change policy when it comes to roads? Well, this is a really big deal, like you say, um, and it's really broken new ground in a wider sense. We already know that air pollution harms our health, and there's a huge weight of evidence um, showing that breathing dirty air cuts our lives short. But the coroner's finding today is a legal first in recognising the toxic levels of pollution found in our towns and cities and the direct role that, that that plays in an individual person's death. And what that's done today, when, when you're talking about road transport, um, it's really put into sharp relief um, government failings to clean up the air. What, what we know is that um, whilst this inquest was about what caused Ella's death rather than necessarily who was at fault, what it's done is it's brought to the public attention a whole host of evidence about just how long the government has known about the harm that air pollution wreaks on people's lives and just how slow they've been to react. And not least the fact that government has been breaching legal limit values mm. for harmful pollutants since they came to force a decade ago. And we know the majority of that comes from emissions from road transport and the dirty okay. emissions that are coming out of our vehicles. We'll talk about Heathrow in a minute, but you know, the Heathrow ruling uh, on the third runner was from the Supreme Court, the highest court in the land. This was one, the ruling of one coroner. So do you really realistically think it'll change the road building plans of this or future governments? Look, I mean, we know that the government has a duty uh, to people in this country to protect the threat of uh, protect their lives from the threat of air pollution. And what the coroner's decision has really has really shone a light on that duty. And it's and it's and it's something that they just really cannot ignore. The government needs to sit up and take notice of the result of this inquest. And, you know, we have a promise from government of a cleaner future. We've got a commitment to net zero. Um, we've got a con commitment to um, 
to, to, to a, a green recovery from this pandemic. So what we need is cleaner infrastructure okay. um, choices going forward. Well, that's interesting, isn't it, Gavin Davis? Because we have all these commitments. I mean, politically, the government is not just committed to a green revolution. It's going to host, you know, the COP summit next year that was supposed to happen this year, but was cancelled because of the pandemic. They're going to be in a very tricky position here because the third runway goes against all their environmental principles and the ruling from the Supreme Court was on a very narrow legal basis. Yeah, <clears throat> that's right. But you, you have to look at um, what it's going to deliver. Now, the courts have been ex um, very clear in what their expectation is for the um, carbon footprint. And if you look at all the groundwork that's um, going on in and around the airport and the infrastructure that they're putting in, we have every confidence that the airport and the people involved are going to meet their carbon footprint requirements as set out by the courts. And the regulators are going to keep a close eye on them. So um, there needs to be investment in the airport. We need this turnaround and we have every confidence that they're going to meet their obligations to reduce the carbon footprint. Right, but the world has moved on since that, you know, since the decision was made to have the third runway. We've had the pandemic. People have really appreciated the cleaner air around them. And this runway is simply out of sync, both politically and environmentally, with the state of the nation when it comes to this. If you, if you look at it um, like that, but what people don't see is the, um, with the airport being um, ground, grounded with the COVID crisis, the amount of poverty in the surrounding areas and the amount of local people that rely on the jobs for the airport. So by not doing it, the um, consequences of poverty is um, extreme. You've got to take into consideration the extra one way is going to create 180,000 new jobs in addition to that 10,000 apprenticeships that's a very good point katie neil isn't it in general you know we all want to be more environmentally conscious we all want cleaner air but we're really going to want these jobs especially after the pandemic yeah i think the point is though there shouldn't be a conflict between the two so fighting for a better environment and creating new jobs can go hand in hand and it's about which infrastructure projects you invest in and the need to invest in cleaner infrastructure um, we've got an economic crisis but we've also got a climate crisis and a public health crisis and we know that investing in, in a green economy can create jobs whilst eradicating great chunks of health of health costs okay. and, and protecting people's lives Katie Neal, thank you very much, and Gavin Davis. Uh, let's go to Alex Thompson then, uh, who's in the newsroom. Alex, a bit of a mixed picture then uh, today, isn't it? Let's put it into some sort of context. Mixed picture, yes, but think of it like this. The binding theme is the most important theme of all at the end of the day, which is the quality of the air we breathe. The untimely death of Ella has clearly set a precedent, which coroner's findings rarely do, and that's because coroners have had uh, findings before which have associated bad air with deaths, but never saying it's a causal factor. That's the change today, and that leaves the, at least the potential, the legal potential, as we've been hearing, for legislative change, which isn't about South East London and Lewisham, or not simply, it's about the whole of England, at the very least, UK probably. So a legal fight on that one. What we saw at Heathrow, another legal fight. Um, the uh, anti-runway campaigners will appeal. They'll appeal to the European Courts on Human Rights in Strasbourg. Now, that's nothing to do with Brexit, nothing to do with the EU. So that remains open, and they'll do it once again on the quality of air. They will say that by putting 700 planes a day extra into Heathrow, you're endangering people's lives because of the quality of the air. So two big legislative legal struggles still to be had, and they've been opened up by both of these cases today. A remarkable uh, link, um, but a remarkable day in both cases. Interesting stuff. Alex, thanks very much. Cathy. Thanks, Matt. Now, for the first time in its history, the UN Humanitarian Aid